And we're seeing two different styles of offense. Yes. Manoman, the big team. They've got the strength of the line. Jackson, obviously that quickness. Jeff Brown will kick off. The man who just scored the touchdown gets the honor of kicking off. And they try to keep it away from Frank Burdick, and they do. With the football is Tim Miller. And Miller trying to take the wall to the outside. He's to the 30, the 30, the 45. He's at midfield, but he stepped out of bounds on the 42-yard line. Let's now go to Iowa City, Iowa, where Greg Warmoth is standing by live with Lou Holtz of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Greg. Well, Joe, it's a bit chilly right now, and it was a, a good, hard-fought football game. Uh, uh, Gophers lose it 31-9. With me now live is Coach Holtz. You're feeling after the game, Coach. Well, you're always disappointed. I felt we lost to a very good football team, the third best in the country, but they converted on third down plays. We dropped some passes. We had our opportunities. I thought our football players played hard. Uh, we had some trouble when we got down inside to 30 with checkoffs. Even the center couldn't hear the checkoffs, and Ricky would go one way and everybody else would go the other way, and that hurt us. But uh, you hate to lose in everything you do, but uh, we got beat by a good football team. We had our chances, and we didn't take advantage of it, and that's our fault. Okay, Coach, thanks for stopping by and talking to us. They do have a bowl bid. Coach, you got to be happy about that. Well, hey, you know, we want to go to the Rose Bowl. This isn't the ultimate. Uh, you have to start somewhere. It is a step. Uh, maybe we can make this. And, try to get a positive impact going into next season. Thanks for stopping by and talk to us. Good luck in the Independence Bowl. Thanks. Joe, back to you in the Twin Cities. The final again, 31-9, to 9, Iowa. All right, thanks, Greg. We're back to live action. Benoman moving the ball, and with that ball is number 20, Harlan Hanson. He just took the, the pass from Mark Agnew, the quarterback, and picked up another first down. Agnew, the play before, while we were away to Iowa City, threw it to Doug Johnson. And that was a pickup of about 15 yards. So Manoman is now driving. And let's take a look at that last play. There's two exceptional tosses that we've seen in a row by Mark Agnew. One previously that we'll be able to see uh, next play would be to Doug Johnson. Agnew. Hanging right on the money. Agnew is now back. We're live. And Agnew has his man inside the 10-yard line. It's caught by Doug Johnson, the senior end. He's down to the 9-yard line. There are what a pitch. There are three perfectly executed pass plays. Perfect throws, perfect reception. Routes well run. Doug Johnson catching two balls. Mark Agnew right across the middle of the dug, running his route perfectly, tucks the ball away, right in the middle of about five defenders. They've gone all the way down the field with about three or four plays. They're knocking on the door for a score with a minute 27 left. It's third down goal, or first down goal to go, verdict. Burdick on the outside has one man to beat, and he is taken down by a whacker, but he's inside the five-yard line to the three-yard line. And it's a pickup of six yards for this young man who's having a whale of a game, Frank Burdick. Wade Wacker says, I don't want you guys to score. I don't want to have to come and march down the field with only a minute left and get that lead back at halftime. Now that both of these teams have settled down, I'm afraid to see what's going to happen in the second half. 136 yards already in the first half for Burdick. The give is up the middle and very close to the first down is Jeff Large. They give Large the touchdown. Jeff Large. I wouldn't have done that. I thought I saw his shoulder hit prior to that line. The official gave a delayed call. And none of the other team gave the call. Uh, usually they all jump up and down when they know he's in. He probably bounced in. Jeff Large, who scored seven touchdowns during the regular season, the six-foot, 180-pound senior, scores on the three-yard run. And now with a chance to tie the game up for Manoman is Mark Agnew, the quarterback, who led that beautiful drive, three nice passes, a couple of runs, and they're in the end zone. With 44 seconds left in the half, this would tie it up. The kick is up, and it splits the uprights. We have a tie game with 44 seconds remaining in the first half, and we've seen these two teams come back from a couple of turnovers and have very successful drives. Very, very successful. We're seeing some exceptional quarterbacking here. There's our run by Jeff Large, again, blowing uh, right through. Good offensive line blocking. We've seen some exceptional quarterbacking, and we've been talking about Wade Wacker being a good thrower, and now we see Mark Agnew being able to throw and thread the needle. 
down the field and, and looked like he was running a two-minute office and do it very, very effectively. Well, I'll tell you what, two junior quarterbacks, two quarterbacks I wouldn't mind having back for another year if I was a head coach. It's almost a shame that we have to break for half because they're both playing so well. I'd like to see them continue. Well, let's see what happens with 44 seconds left. See, the Mohawk is in. That's the thing. Now, that's uh, the, the original style, uh -huh. Mohawk. In case you're thinking about getting one, Doug. <laughs> and Mark Agnew will kick off. And it's real interesting that both quarterbacks are the kickers. Both quarterbacks uh, seem to be doing the punting. They are just uh, basically exceptional athletes. Agnew purposely kicks a low line driver and picked up there by number 22, and that is Andy Lundland. And Andy is taken down at the 26-yard line, the 16-yard return on the kickoff for Andy. And with 39 seconds left, let's see what Mr. Wacker has up his sleeve. You know, head coach Tyrone Wacker, as we take a look at the scoring drive, 58 yards, a minute 52 seconds left, Jeff Large scoring on the three-yard run. Head coach Tyrone Wacker is 22 and 6 at Jackson. He's 78 and 10 overall. Now he started coaching at Gaylord, where he led them to the state title in 1972. So Tyrone Wacker, as we see him there, he's been to the state championship game before. A handoff up the middle, and sniffing that play out is Brian Leslie, the nose tackle. The, ha the give was to Jeff Brown, and he went absolutely nowhere. Now that was supposedly a safe play. Let's run out the clock, and Brian Leslie almost turned it into a disaster. And that is going to be the end of the first half, and we've seen a pretty decent first half, a couple of mistakes, but I think we've seen that both of these offensive units can put some points on the board. The second half could be an exceptional one. Now we look forward to it with these quarterbacks threading the needle, and the receivers hanging under the ball. It's going to be a great, great second half. I think this defensive, uh, when we're talking about the defensive line, I think that it's been very, very solid play on, on uh, both of these defenses, and I agree with you. I think we're using exceptional offensive talent here. Well, let's see what Ed Cairo has for us on the sidelines. Ed? We have Ken Bauman, uh, the coach at the moment, and Kenny, I didn't uh, notice that your pass-to-run ratio was all that uh, uh, close during the regular season, but you sure pulled out three nice ones on that last drive. Well, we really felt that going into the ball game, we'd have to throw the ball more than we normally do against Jackson because their defense is, is really tough against the run. And uh, we've executed well. The kids have given Mark time to throw, and once he settled down a little bit, he's throwing the ball a lot better. What are your concerns at this point? You're even, but it's a, it's a new ball game. Well, I guess our big concern is uh, our defense. Uh, they're so explosive offensively. Uh, and the other concern that we have right now is our lack of depth and uh, the toll that the, the indoor temperature is going to have on our kids. But we'll, we'll line up and come back and play as hard as we can as long as we can. Could be who's ahead at the end, huh? I, yeah, you're right there. We're, uh, we will line up and play hard, and uh, we'll execute, and we'll, we'll, make them, we'll make them work for this thing. We're going after them. Thank you, Kenny, very much. Ken Bauman, coach at Monoman, back upstairs. All right, Ed, the score is tied at halftime, 14-14. We'll return with the exciting halftime activities, including the Grand Rapids High School Marching Band, right after this. We've got ourselves a good old-fashioned barn burner. Hello, everybody. Joe Schmidt along with Doug Kingswriter. Some action in the first half, and uh, we had a lot of action in that first half to talk about, Doug. We're going to look at some highlights here in just a minute. Both teams got their offenses moving a little bit later in the first half. Let's take a look at some of those highlights. We'll start it out with Monoman. Here, the give is to Frank Burdick. He's gone. He is gone. He made a wonderful step, sidestep over a tackle that sprung him, and, of course, he put a lot of distance between himself and the defenders. They gave up about the 20. 71-yard run made it 7 to nothing in favor of Benoman, but Jackson will come back, and they use this play to their advantage. The pass will go to Littleburg. Watch him use the ref as a screen, and he eventually is taken down inside the 25-yard line. From there, they will get the touchdown. Bruce Johnson will take the ball here. Good power run by Bruce. Very good run by Bruce. Good instincts. Got to the goal line. That made it 7-7, but Jackson would come back and take the lead for the first time in the game. Jeff Brown takes it 18 yards. He's just about wide open. That made it 14-7 after the conversion. But Monoman will score in this three-yard run. The point after was good, and a large hit on the three-yard run. And that's where we're at. The score is tied 14-14. Take a look at the stats. Uh, anything glaring stick out to you at all there, Doug? Well, strong rushing yards in terms of an omen. 
Uh, more, maybe more ball control, use of time longer. Penalties were low. I think the, the glaring thing is the turnover. Three fumbles for Jackson. They could have led by now. Yes, they had a couple of good drives stopped with a fumble. Of course, Manoman's fumble was a costly fumble for them because they were driving. The fumble came down at about the 20-yard line. So both teams have made some mistakes, but both teams have been aggressive, and we've seen some outstanding hitting in this game. It's been one of the harder hitting games we've seen so yes, far. Yes, it has. In fact, the hits have even caused many of the fumbles. What do you anticipate here in the second half? As wide open as we saw it towards the end of the first half? I think even more wide open. These teams are confident. They know what they're up against. Mark Agnew certainly is much more confident in his passing ability. Wade Wacker knows what he can do. The receivers are anxious to make the big play and drive home in their new car. So. All right. Well, it could be leading them to a brand new title. We'll be back for the second half action right after this timeout with the score 14-14. Back in a minute. We're just waiting the start of the second half of this Class B championship game. Manoman uh, and the Blue Jays tied up 14 and 14 at uh, the end of the half. Tyrone Walk uh, Wacker, their head coach, is just headed out here now. Uh, we're hoping just to see uh, what kept him. He kept his team in there quite a while. Hello, Coach. Uh, just a quick question before you go back to the second half. It's It's been very tight, a couple of very explosive offenses. Yeah, it has been. I guess if we could hang on to football a little better, we might be in control a little bit, but that's a real good football over team over there. And uh, You got any good plays? <laughs> I might have a couple drawn up. Uh, we can do something here in the dirt if we could get this yeah. turf out of here. Right. What, what I'm wondering is, uh, why did you keep everybody so long? You must have had a lot to say. Yeah, quite a bit to say. Uh, we just have to make so many defense or try to make a lot of defensive adjustments. We've never been kicked around like this. 